Hey, B Dougie back again with another feature for you to check out. All right, so if you've been following GitHub and the changelog posts, uh, definitely check out the videos that we have here on YouTube, but also check out the changelog blog and uh, see all the features we've been shipping. And speaking of which, today we're gonna talk about something new with NPM. So here I've got Roy, senior engineer on the NPM team. So Roy, take it away. Hey, thanks B Dougie. So yeah, my name is Roy Adorno. I'm a engineer in the NPM CLI. I'd like to take us from a tour of the exciting new features for NPM 7. Cool. So yeah, here basically I just have an empty folder here. Uh, and basically what I'm gonna do here is start a new, uh, basically a new project here. So I think uh, the exciting thing to start with would me maybe to start with workspaces. Yeah, uh, I've heard a lot about workspaces. I know uh, folks have been wanting this for the longest time. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you got. So let me start with that. So workspaces in the context of uh, NPM 7 is uh, basically is this uh, sugar syntax on top of uh, links. So NPM uh, supported links for a long time. So now we have uh, workspaces that will basically automatically recognize anything you declare as a workspace within your package JSON and make sure that the NPM CLI uh, will properly link that package in the process of an npm install from the from the project level so i can go ahead and make a quick demo here so basically what we want let's say we have a workspace in this project and just goes from a folder named a i'm gonna keep it very short very simplistic so it's easy to visualize that, that the changes here so basically you go ahead and declare a workspaces uh, property in your package json so here I'm also going to go ahead, create the directory and make sure it has a valid package JSON uh, file inside that. So we go ahead and create a new package JSON file here for my A workspace. Let's, so now I have uh, this very small workspace here and I can run an NPM install from my project top, top level here. And what, what it's going to do it's make sure uh, that A is now installed as a dependency of my top level project. So I can also go ahead and check out the node modules folder and I can see it properly plays the same link there from a folder and a project a package named A into my expected folder there. Yeah, this is great because uh, I know with maintaining and contributing to a lot of open source packages that are in node modules, uh, it can be challenging trying to create the link between the local environment versus what's on NPM. So having workspaces seems like it's going to make that a breeze to, to work with in the future. Yeah, yeah. So basically what the NPM 7 uh, CLI ship now is a very foundational support to it. So it's, uh, it's only making sure the install part gets it right. But we are currently working on adding more features, uh, more capacity, cap capabilities to uh, working with these workspaces. But fundamentally what it enables, which is really, really nice. Uh, I can just do a quick demonstration here. It will enable you to basically come uh, inside your project. You can refer to your workspace A as uh, and require it just by that simple name. So uh, regardless if you're installing A from the registry or just using it from your workspace, you can just work as if it's just a package, right? So that's the very flexible nature of uh, working with workspaces that people were really excited about. Yeah, this is great because uh, I know with maintaining and contributing to a lot of open source packages that are in node modules, uh, it can be challenging trying to create the link between the local environment versus what's on NPM. So having workspaces seems like it's going to make that a breeze to, to work with in the future. Yeah, so maybe we can uh, move on with this uh, tutorial here and also show up uh, peer dependency. Yeah, so peer dependencies, uh, they are now installed by default in uh, NPM 7, which is the big biggest change we had, big, uh, biggest breaking change for the NPM CLI. So basically the way it works is that the, the client goes a long way to make sure uh, it can actually work with the ecosystem of packages out there today. Uh, so basically what we have by default is a very loose mode that will try to be uh, very permissive with possible errors you're getting out there from, from basically nested dependencies, right? That you can't really control with, with, within your project. So in this case, it's like, 
you can just declare a pure dependency and a NP simple npm install will make sure to put a, everything in place. Uh, but it might still run into errors in the case where the peer dependency problem is, is actually in your direct dependencies. So these are the cases where you might actually run into a e-resolve error. And uh, then the thing where the, the, the client is doing here is trying to make it more transparent how to act on this problem or like and fix your dependency tree. And I think it's also important to notice uh, we're also adding a escape hatch. So basically we have the legacy peer DAPS option. Uh, you can NPM install using a legacy peer DAPS option that basically will ignore anything, uh, all, the, all the works, all the peer dependencies, just like uh, NPM 6 uh, would uh, install. And so basically if you have, if you're facing problem, that's a good way to maybe bypass it while you wait for uh, the projects you're depending on to fix their dependency tree. Uh, but on the other hand, we also have a strict peer dApps uh, option that this might be also more helpful to package authors and people like that have more impact on the ecosystem uh, so that they can make sure their dependency tree, like it's perfect <laughs> and they can quickly act on it or, or, or at least have a more actionable output, uh, quickly telling them, okay, there is a problem within the dependency tree install. Yeah, so let me just quickly go ahead here with our, our, our tutorial and let me add a peer dependency to, to this workspace, right? And let's see how the client takes care of that. So basically here, I'm gonna add a very simplistic uh, package as a peer dependency of A. And now if I run another NPM install from my top level, uh, I can see that it's not there. <laughs> oh no, it is there, it is there. Yeah, the thing here, I just read into another uh, very small breaking change we did in uh, NPM 7, which is, uh, yeah, NPM LS, now it's going to list only the top level dependencies. So this is a more quality of life uh, change we did because dependency trees installs these days are so large, right? It's hard to get a usable output out of that. So if you want to see the entire install tree, you got to use dash dash all. So npm ls dash dash all will show your entire. Yeah, that is a very small npm seven change. It's a more of a quality of life uh, change, and uh, it's good that I hit into it and I could uh, also show it in the demo. So let me go ahead and start with uh, npm six install here, so that we can get the previous package lock format, and then we can do an npm7 install and we can compare the changes. So let me run an npm6 install. Uh, I got a package log file here. Let me track that. And now uh, let me go here and npm install using my npm7 CLI. And then we can run into the differences here. Yeah, so we can see that there is a warning that we just up, upgraded uh, your package lock uh, version. There is this warning here basically because for very, very large projects, it might take a while. So it also mentioned that. But basically, if we look at the differences here, uh, you can see that we update the lock file version. Uh, so that is just to signal that this is a lock file v2. And uh, that, but that's still backwards compatible, right? To what we had before. So basically it added this new package section to it, which is the, uh, yeah, I was looking for uh, the word, is a more deterministic way to reproduce the install tree <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, so here we can, you can also see the, the dependencies got updated. Yeah, I think uh, I can also see that the abrav dependency is now part of the package lock since NPM 7 is tracking the peer dependencies now. Yeah, well, appreciate you walking through these different features for NPM 7, also the little hidden feature you said with the NPM LS as well. Uh, good to point that out. Uh, last question, where can folks sort of keep up to date with the changes and track uh, future releases for NPM? Right. Yeah, I think right now the best place to track uh, all the changes would, would be the NPM CLI repo on GitHub, right? So that would be uh, GitHub. Uh, dot com slash npm slash cli uh, we have uh, a very good change log that we keep there in the github releases so that will definitely be the best way to keep up with the 
anything new changing in the CLI. If you're interested in keeping up to date with GitHub and checking out new features, definitely keep an eye on this playlist. Uh, speaking of which, why don't you watch the next video?